Right now at noon, a $100 million wrongful death lawsuit is filed following this month's deadly duck boat crash in Missouri. Plus, a man talks about losing his wife and two great-grandchildren in one of the wildfires burning in California. This is News 3 at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 on this Monday. Hope you all had a nice weekend. We'll get to those stories in a bit. But first, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. Good afternoon to you. Nice, nice weather this past weekend. Good afternoon. A beautiful weekend, right? There were some showers that popped up yesterday, but they just kind of popped up and fell mm -hmm. apart. So they really weren't that all big of an issue. We're going to see a similar setup going on as we go into this afternoon. Already we're watching some of those clouds begin to develop, and we're going to keep a close eye on those as we get Get you further into the day. The further these clouds develop, the increase we'll have in our rain chances later on. 79 degrees is the temperature right now. Dew points are into the upper 50s, so there's a little bit of mugginess, but really it's not all that bad at all. 80 degrees over in Lone Rock, Boscobel at 82 degrees right now. 78 as you work your way over towards Watoma. The Lakeshore, all of our friends there are sitting into the 70s as of now. Here are those dew points. You see where dew points are mainly into the 50s and 60s. This is adding a little bit of moisture to the air, but it's not so oppressive to step outside. So it's still a fairly pleasant afternoon, especially with a lot of the sunshine that we do have outside as of now. Notice we are not tracking any kind of shower or thunderstorm activity immediately, but in that last frame, you kind of see some trying to pop up. You've got some in the Door County area and another one south and west of Madison. We're going to watch those storm chances as we go through the next couple of hours. That'll go into the early afternoon before we turn things off. Temperatures falling into the upper 50s by the time we get you towards tomorrow morning. And mo most of us could use some rain. Most of us could use some rain, especially central parts of the state. It's abnormally dry there. Some of the trees around are have drought stress, um, so we'll want to make sure that we can get some moisture to them. There. All right, we'll check back in a few minutes. Thank All right, you, Chris. Top of the news today, the operator of the duck boat that sank in Missouri this month is facing a wrongful death lawsuit. Relatives of two victims are seeking $100 million in damages. 17 people died when the boat sank on a lake near Branson, Missouri. The lawsuit specifically says the canopy of the duck boat trapped passengers, dragging them to the bottom of the lake. It also says the duck boat industry has ignored a number of safety improvements made in the past. A federal investigation into the Branson crash is still underway. New evacuations are underway in a deadly and growing wildfire in Northern California. The so-called Car Fire is burning around 150 square miles and is only 17% contained. Around 40,000 people have been forced from their homes. Six people have died. Ed Bledsoe says the fire stopped him from getting home in time to rescue his wife and two great-grandchildren. I was talking to my little grandson on the phone. He's saying, Grandpa, please, you got to come and help us. The fire's at the back door. I said, <laughs> I said, I'm right by you, honey. Just hold on. Grandpa's coming. Police say looting is also becoming a problem for those living near the car fire. And altogether, there are nine major wildfires burning in California. The board of directors at CBS is meeting today. The meeting was scheduled before Friday's report in The New Yorker that described allegations of sexual harassment against CBS CEO Leslie Moonves. Six women told The New Yorker that Moonves sexually harassed them. The board will look into whether or not Moonves should step aside during the probe into this. The directors also might look at selecting a special committee to oversee the investigation. Last year, CBS This Morning host Charlie Rose was fired after several women came forward accusing him of sexual harassment. Fort Atkinson police are still looking for a father who took his three children without their mother's permission last week and hasn't been seen since. Police say Wee Chu called his wife on Monday around 10 o'clock in the morning telling her that he was at Chicago's O'Hare Airport and was going to take their three children to China. The wife says she told Chu that she wanted to pick up the kids, but he hung up. Authorities confirmed Chu and his children never boarded a flight. Chu left in a white 2015 Ford F-50 uh, pickup with the Wisconsin plate on the screen now. or It's not on your screen, but uh, he had $7,000 with him. His child's birth certificate was with, is with him as well. The car was last seen in West Virginia on Wednesday. There is the license plate number LH4873. Anyone with information about Chu or where he and his kids might be should call the Fort Atkinson Police Department right away. 
Wisconsin's five-day sales tax holiday is about to begin. People will not have to pay sales tax on clothing, computers, and school supplies between Wednesday and Sunday. There are some strings. Each item of clothing must be less than $75 to be exempt, and computers must be purchased for personal use. It must cost $750 or less. Republican Governor Scott Walker signed a bill in April that created the one-time sales tax holiday. Democrats have said the holiday is an election year gimmick. The Overture Center for the Arts has a new CEO. Sandra Gakic will serve as the president and CEO for the company. She'll start on September 24th. She steps into a position formerly held by Ted Didi, who retired in May of this year. There's more to come on News 3 at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Foil pouch cooking is always a hit. So wait until you see what state fair favorite I have inside this. Whenever we do a segment featuring a recipe that's cooked in a foil pouch, we always get requests to create more. And I get it. After all, they're easy to assemble, fun to eat, and simple to clean up. That's why we're sharing a new foil packet recipe featuring a state fair favorite, sausage, peppers, and onions. And it goes together like this. We begin by tearing four pieces of heavy-duty aluminum foil, so they're about 12 inches square. Then we cut red and green bell pepper into strips and place them in a bowl along with some thinly sliced onion and a few spices. Now for the assembly, we place a quarter of the veggies onto the center of each piece of foil and top them with some Italian sausage that we've cut into chunks. Spoon some spaghetti sauce over it and loosely fold up the foil, making a pouch that's ready to cook in the oven or on the grill. Once they're done, which only takes about 20 minutes, it's up to you to decide whether you want to eat these right out of the foil or dish them up on a crusty roll with a bit of the sauce. Either way, you'll be in for a treat. To get the recipe for what we call State Fair Sausage Packets, 
simply visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found an easy wrapped up way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. Coming up, it's time to start thinking about your plant and garden questions. Linda Barch from the Bruce Company will join us in a few minutes to answer them live on the air. Plus, some rain is possible for tonight. Chris Reese joins us after the break to talk about our chances of some precip in the first floor forecast. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues and call our hotline. Volunteers will help you with any consumer complaints. The number is 608-270-2833. The service is open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrial is down 110 points. The NASDAQ, wow, look at that, down 107 points. Let's check in now with Q106 Farm Director Pam Yankee on this Monday. Hopefully you have some green in your arrows. Oh, yeah, we got green all over the place for commodities today, Mark, and uh, everybody's still smiling after the mild weather that we picked up over the weekend. One question I'm sure that uh, our viewers will have for Lynn when uh, she takes them a little bit later is uh, the risk of late blight. I was talking with Amanda Gevins, one of our plant pathologists on campus. Uh, they are kind of keeping an eye out on Wisconsin's potato and tomato crop to make sure that they don't fall victim to late blight uh, with the cool temperatures we've had and a little bit of the wet weather that's popped up around southern Wisconsin. Uh, she says those are ideal conditions conditions to uh, create those lesions that you might see on the leaves or the fruit of your plants. So keep an eye out for that. She said it's kind of a, a watery smudge that uh, ultimately turns brown and basically kills the plant. And the reason I bring it up is it's not just about detecting it. Boy, is it ever about uh, doing away with it, disposing of that plant material properly so you don't end up reinfecting your garden for next year. So that means uh, pulling those plants, bagging them up and disposing of them properly, not just pitching them off to the side and thinking that your problem will go away. So right now, she says they have not had any reports of uh, late blight, but Minnesota has in their tomato crops, so gardeners keep an eye out. 
Big swings today as far as dairy markets are concerned. The grain trade's looking positive because we had fairly decent export intentions announced this morning by USDA. But I've got all kinds of emails out to find out why today barrel cheese dropped 11.5 cents in a day to 140.5. 40-pound black cheese today unchanged, still holding at 152. Double-A butter was up a quarter of a cent at 226.5 per pound. So again... That roller coaster ride on uh, what's going on with cheese <laughs> keeps the viewers. I've had people say, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but just the way that you talk about it, it's got it, it's intrigued them. So That's right. here we are, it's roller enter- coaster and again. Entertaining if nothing else. <laughs> That's what we're all about. Unless you're trying to make money on cheese, I guess. That's right. That's true. Very true. All right, Pam. Thank you. Yep. Time now for the weather. Chris is here. Some clouds out there, but no rain as of yet. No rain as of yet here in Madison. Some rain has popped up on radar, so we're going to be co- keeping a close eye on that with the chance for some showers and thunderstorms as we go throughout the day. Here's the cloud cover right now, right over Lake Mendota and the Memorial Union Terrace. You kind of see, yeah, it looks a little rainy out there. We'll watch how that pans out going through the rest of the day. 79 degrees is our temperature. If you are stepping out the door right now, winds are calm. Dew points are at 59 as of now, and that's a little bit of humidity out there, but still, dew points in the 50s, I mean, it feels rather good compared to what we could see in terms of dew points. Dew points are in the 60s out towards Lone Rock. Really, it's the 50s and 60s for about all of us. Now, visible cloud track, we have seen the clouds kind of pop up as we've gone through the past couple of hours. Now these showers and thunderstorms are starting to develop underneath that cloud cover. It doesn't look like a whole lot, but in the past three hours, we've seen some begin to develop. You've had some up near Door County and just to the south and east of Green Bay. Other showers have developed right around Sauk City and then a decent shower that had some lightning in it. This is right around Dodgeville in parts of Iowa County. We'll keep a close eye on the atmosphere going through the next several hours because, of course, future track shows what we're talking about with those chances for showers and thunderstorms to just pop up, especially as we get you further into the afternoon, right around that peak heating of the day. That'll linger around. By the time we get the sun to set, we'll turn off those chances for showers and thunderstorms for tonight. Lows will fall into the upper 50s. On Tuesday, we're going to do very much of the same thing here. Temperatures into the 70s and 80s with that chance for some isolated showers to pop up. I do think Tuesday will be a bit less of coverage as opposed to today because today's shower and thunderstorm chance is still a part of this upper level low that's been controlling our weather for the past several days. But that upper level low finally getting out of here, this region of high pressure working its way to the south and east. It's this region of low pressure gradually moving its way to the north and east. That is going to be what impacts our weather as we get you towards your Tuesday, bringing those isolated chances for showers and thunderstorms. Then Wednesday night into Thursday, we're going to watch this cold front move in as that's going to bring a rain chance as well. Rain is something we could use around here. We are abnormally dry, especially across central and northern Wisconsin. Here in Madison, we're not officially in a drought yet, but get this. I mean, we are more than an inch behind schedule for how much rain we should see for the month of July. We won't be making that up. In fact, we'll get about a quarter of an inch or so. Maybe this is from our model showing you guys tonight, and then that's it as we go really through the rest of the week. And by the time we get you better chances for rain, the month of August begins to arrive. So rain is something we definitely need. 81 degrees this afternoon with that chance for some rain. It's in the form of an isolated shower or thunderstorm as we go through the next 10 days. There are some better chances for rain that do pop up, especially towards the middle and end of the week, Wednesday night into Thursday. But those are not major rain chances at that. Still, all of these are more so your isolated shower kind of rain chance that we've had for the past couple of days. So it looks like it might be a minute before we get some true heavy rain in here to kind of make up for that deficit. A lot of 80s on that 10 day. A lot of 80s on that 10 day as well. We're going kind of back into a summery pattern uh, before we get another cool shot to come in here. It's August. It is. All right. Thank you, Chris. My pleasure. There's more to come on News 3 at noon. Up next, Linda Barch from the Bruce Company is here. Give us a call at 270-9933. Any plans or questions you have? What's going on over there? Nothing. Okay. We'll get to your questions right after this.
Linda Barch from the Roost Company is here taking your calls at 270-9933. Good to see you. Good to see you, you Mark. Some showy plants here today. Absolutely. Yeah, I have a couple of annuals in the back that are particularly wonderful. And then, of course, the perennials that I've selected. This one is, is sort of cool. It's called Red Hot Popsicle. But um, the ones down front are all uh, perennials. So I brought on a number of coral bells, and they vary so much. This one here is called Obsidian, and then there's... Um, Red Hot Poker, I believe, and then Lime Marmalade is that l real chartreuse one. So that's a plant that if you want to do a collection of coral bells, Very nice. you can have real... But they don't right. want full sun. They they don't want full sun, especially if they're sort of that chartreuse color. Yes, I know. Partial sun is good, you know. <laughs> Learned that the hard way. Let's go to the phones. We'll start with Diane in Oregon. Hi, Diane. Hi there. Hi, which question? Um, I want to know if it's still too early to cut back the iris plants and bleeding heart plants, my bleeding hearts are now turning yellow, so I'm just wondering if I can cut them back. You can cut bleeding hearts back. Mine have already turned brown, so they're all cleaned up. And that, that's why it's a good reminder to know that that plant dies back, so you should have something in front of it that's going to look nice for the rest of the summer. And then the iris, it's actually a good idea to cut those iris back to about six inches because there's a bore that can, get, can lay a little egg in there and then proceed down to the rhizome, so get cut those back. Mm -hmm. I learned the hard way about the bleeding hearts, too. I have something else in there. <laughs> Let's go to Mary in Reedsburg. Hi, Mary. Hi, um, I have a question. I was sick and I didn't get my garden planted and all my garden plants died, but I still have like nasturtium seeds and stuff like that. Can I plant those now and put them under a grow light in the house later? And then she'll still plan on planting them outside? Is that what you're thinking? No, I was gonna plant them in pots. Okay. And, and I have a commercial grow light. All right, well, yes, nasturtiums probably would tolerate that. They, you know, it's not going to be like growing outside, but um, we're not going to have frost till probably the beginning of October. So we, we still have a couple, few months. Still some time. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm glad you're feeling better, by the way. Genevieve in Stoughton. Hi, Genevieve. Hi. Hi. Um, there's a friend of mine, she has hydrangeas, and she planted six of them. Mm -hmm. And each year, only one blooms. And she was wondering, how come? Well, the, the situation with hydrangeas is that now there are lots of different varieties. So there's you know, fashion types that are, that are real reliable, and then there's a whole group of um, woody plants, woody hydrangeas, and then there's a newer group that, uh, like Endless Summer is one of the, the newer types. And I've heard many people complain that they are a little bit unpredictable how, how well they flower. So you, the trick is that you, you do want to fertilize them. They, you, they have to be watered. They can't be growing in, in dense shade because they're not going to perform like the old-fashioned, you know, there's animal hydrangea. You can grow that sun shade. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But in the summer and some of the newer ones, you have to be careful to move them in the sun, fertilize, water, don't prune them back in the winter. Yeah, because the woody ones you don't want to prune back. Right. That could be a problem. Possibly, but I don't know what she has. All right. <laughs> Emily in Poinette. Hi, Emily. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, good afternoon. I have a question about my Rose of Sharon. This oh. year, it did not bloom. It did not leaf out, but the branches don't appear to be dead. If I mm -hmm. break them, there seems to be green in there. So I'm just wondering, should I cut it all the way down? It's, I would say, about eight feet tall now, and every year it's bloomed just beautifully. But this year... It just sits there and does nothing. Does nothing. I know that's unusual. By this time, by July, especially since the the rains have stopped, I would think that that wood would have totally gone brown. Um, there should be some leafing. I, I, I'm not sure what to tell you because it's, if there's still green, I wouldn't prune them down to the ground though. I think then you'd be reducing all of the reserve that that plant has. That's a very odd situation. Yeah, eight feet tall. Mm -hmm. They all can right. get that big. Randy in Oxford. Hi, Randy. Hi, Hi. I've got a question about uh, peony plants right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have a lot of rust or blight on my peonies, and it appears to be weakening them. I'm wondering what I could do to, to correct that. Okay. If there's parts of the peony plant that are, that are black or not healthy looking, prune that off. And hopefully that doesn't mean that the whole plant is down to the ground. But if, there, if it's black or sick looking, peonies should be, that should be removed, and then you, you will start over. I don't want a lot of growth, but... It's best to get rid of that because otherwise it serves as inoculum that then is going to infect 
than other parts of the yeah. plant. It's sort of like Pam's talking about. When you get rid of that, you, you put that away. You don't put that in your in Make your Make it up and get rid of it. Yes. All right, we're out of time. If you're on the line, stay there. Linda will talk to you off the air. We'll see you next time. All right, very good. And Chris has one final check of the forecast. That's right. A chance for showers and thunderstorms developing into the afternoon. Not everyone gets wet, but nonetheless, that chance will be there. We'll see highs right around 81 degrees. Here's how that'll look on radar. You'll essentially see spotty, scattered showers and thunderstorms that'll turn off pretty much once we get you into the afternoon and evening. All right, that's our time for now. We thank you for watching. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.